Hello there, Fanciful Dancing Star here, and the topic of today's video is Super Mario Bros. 2. Was it all just a dream? Is the ending reveal a lame twist? Well, I'll get to that in a bit, but I do want to go over a few things first, seeing as how Super Mario Bros. 2 is one of my most favorite entries in the Super Mario series. Now, there's been countless videos about this game, and an overabundance of them go over how it originated as Doki Doki Panic. Though, as much as that gets repeated ad nauseum, not as many people mention that Doki Doki Panic itself originated as a shelf to Mario Vertical Scroller. I mean, if you've ever wondered why Doki Doki Panic still had Mario elements, such as the Superstar and the POW block, well, there you go. And, of course, there's one thing that's kind of unavoidable. This is, of course, something that I get irritated each time I hear it. But it is something that's always being said and just constantly, constantly, constantly being repeated. And it's that, well, people like to often say SMB2 is not a real Mario game. <sighs> but that if you go back and see Famitsu's reviews for Doki Doki Panic, many of them actually consistently compare it to Super Mario Bros., citing DDP as feeling very similar to it. But hey, I guess everything's relative. As much as Super Mario Bros. 2 has gained a reputation in more modern times of being the odd one out, there is enough historical documentation to prove it wasn't thought of that way when it was released in the US originally. In fact, Super Mario Bros. 2 was, in many ways, the very face of the Mario franchise for much of the Super Mario Bros. series' early tenure in the United States. I'd also like to mention that Doki Doki Panic was originally a licensed game. A licensed game for a one-time event. Meaning that if Super Mario Bros. 2 never existed, Doki Doki Panic would have become just a footnote in gaining history, possibly being buried in obscurity due to not being able to get re-released as the license would have long expired, and would never have a reason to be renewed since the Yume Kojo Festival, the thing the DDP was made to promote and tie in with, was a one-time thing. But another thing to note is that the Super Mario series would be very different today. I mean, we wouldn't have the bombs, shy guys, pokies, sniffits, birdo, and so on. See, while the Yume Kojo characters were owned by Fuji TV, the vast majority of the content in DDP is owned by Nintendo. And I'm glad all those wacky enemies were allowed to become Mario characters. Now if only Nintendo would bring back Mauser and make one of my biggest fangirl dreams come true. Hmm, dreams. Oh well, yeah, that is a bit of a can of worms with this game all on its own, isn't it? Yep. It's time to get to the main topic of the video. Finally, probably some of you are saying. <laughs> but yeah, um, okay look. I know people like to say that the uh, it was all a dream ending was a cop out, but was it really? I mean, first of all, all the dream stuff is pretty heavily telegraphed, and for anyone to say that it was a bad twist wasn't paying attention since it's not even really a twist to begin with. The dream stuff is mentioned not just in the manual, but also in the text within the game itself, which I think was probably a rarity at the time. And keeping that text in mind, there's actually some interesting interpretations you could arrive at. So, I pose this question to you. Was it really just a dream? It's mentioned that Mario had a dream about finding a staircase in a cave where, behind the door at the top of the staircase, he could hear the voices of the people of Subcon calling for help to be rescued from the evil ward. And then Mario tells his friends about this, and they end up finding a cave with a staircase and door identical to what was in Mario's dream. And thus is where our adventure began. And Sokkan is already referred to as the Land of Dreams. I don't think the ending of the game means that none of this ever happened. 
Super Mario, both past and present, has never been a stranger to fantastical elements, and entering the dream world fits right in with that. So, it's of my opinion that the events of Super Mario Bros. 2 did happen. It's just that since Subcon is the land of dreams, the adventure had to happen within a dream. Likely a shared dream between Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. And to add on to that, I feel that Wart is very much a real being. In universe, of course. That simply likes to inhabit dreams. Sort of like a frog version of Freddy Krueger without any of the murdering. And there's credence for this since, well, you know, Wart also appears in Link's Awakening. Along with a bunch of other Mario characters. But my point is, well... If you know anything about Wink's Awakening, you know why this point is relevant. But with that said, I truly do believe that Mario and friends had an actual adventure, but it just so happened to have happened in a dream world. Also, not having Wart be a part of Mario and Luigi Dream Team is one of the biggest missed opportunities ever, but let's not get into that right now. You know, I actually kind of wonder. Was the entire adventure itself the very dream Mario had and then told his friends about? Is the ending of the game just the night before Mario went out with his friends to tell them about it? Are we stuck in some weird infinite loop here? Well, whatever the answers are there, I think, and again, this is just my own opinion, but I think it was a dream, but I also think it really was all more than just a dream. It all really happened to Mario and friends, just that it was within a world accessible through dreaming. And that's pretty much my thoughts on that. I don't really have anything else to say, but go play Super Mario Brothers 2 if you never have. Especially if you've played and liked Super Mario 3D World. Anywho, as always, I'd like to offer my thanks for listening to my ramblings. And I hope this video's been entertaining and or enlightening. I was a little bit more lazy with the editing with this one, mostly because there's another video that's kind of been stuck in a hiatus limbo due to how long it's been taking to edit. I need to figure out a better balance on how much editing is needed for these videos, I guess. I don't know. But at any rate, yeah. Thanks again for watching, and see you in the next video. Laters.